Hi guys, Paul here, Josh. and Josh. 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 Slasher Sunday. What are we doing for Slasher Sunday? We are talking about the burning crotch. The burning. The burning. Now where where did that uh, little uh, doodly doodly thing I had go? Oh, here it is. Oh, you know that doodly doodly thing. Yeah, we're talking about the burning. Music by Rick Rickman. Rick, 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 Rick. We do that at the press now. The rack ball. You don't. Yeah. Even, you ever know about the rack ball? No. I'll show you some time. Yeah, Rick Wakeman, 1981. Another film from 1981 that is just the cat's meow. It's the bee's knees. No, we're going to talk about the Cropsey legend here. A little urban legend going on in New York, upstate New York. The Cropsey legend. There was another film at the same time being made, the same time this film was being made, called Madman. They were using the same Cropsey legend, and of course, these guys had the rights to it first. They kind of were like in the thing, and they had more money, they had more backers, and they knew they wouldn't be able to fight the court costs. So they said, hey, screw it, we'll, we'll change it to Madman Mars. They used Mars because, of course, the Holtz Planet Suite. He was a big uh, classical music guy, so he said, oh, Mars from the Holtz Planet Suite, well, Madman Mars. And that's what they did there. This, however, kept the Cropsey idea and worked with it using him as the curator or handyman, I guess, as the thing. And they were screwing with him and ended up burning him live. He actually didn't die and he came back for revenge after his uh, wounds healed horrifically. Wounds. And it's just, it was one of those things where right at the beginning it's like, hey, you're, the, the graphs didn't take. We can't do anything for you. Just try to live the best life you can, bud. It's sad, really. I mean, what did that guy do? Nothing. He didn't. He just was sleeping, being himself. He already looked like he wasn't doing well in life. He was living in a shack. I was working at a camp just to fucking make my bills. You yeah, know? and these poor fucking assholes come along. Not poor. Fuck Entitled this. prick yeah, assholes. Yeah, fucking yuppie larva. Yeah. Fucking... Basically want to fuck with him because he's an asshole. If you were living that life, would you be pleasant too? No, man. I'd be fucking, you know. Why do you think I'm so angry all the fucking time? This is just a shed. This is it. This is all you see. Yeah. That's There's it. no wall on that side. No, we're actually outdoors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Well, let's, shall, we, shall we dive right in? Mm -hmm. Shall we get her done? Go. Get, get her done. Get her done. Go and get her done. Uh, I don't know where this movie's filmed, but it takes place just like Friday the 13th. Yeah, because it's literally a carbon copy of it. Oh, look at that! I brought some from some outside. No oh, bug. Um, but yeah, the so it starts out with a bunch of teenagers being a bunch of assholes to a guy who lives in a little shack, and uh, of course, just like every horror movie, their prank goes terribly wrong, mm -hmm. and this poor gentleman is burned to death, alive, but does not die. And uh, he is in a hospital, and obviously his skin grafts aren't working and everything, and. Uh, I, I want to say, I did think when the black dude is showing the doctor around, the you new doctor. You got to see this. You got to see it. I really thought that was a prank, and it just did not. It was actually part of the movie. Uh, I don't know, because the, 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 the guy grabs his arm, he's like, ah! And it's just so, I'm waiting for him to be like, as soon as the doctor runs away, I'm like, ah, see, we got him, dude. No, no, it was real. No, it was real, and it was bad acting at its finest, but it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. Yeah. You know, and then we fast forward what a year or two. Yeah, when he said, yeah, you know, they basically release him. Yeah. But what what is the, what the first thing that happens? He goes and kills a hooker. Well, I would too. Yeah, I mean, like, that's all you do with hookers is you you know stab 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 dab. dab that's dab, all they're dab, good stab, for. Stab, dab. No, it's exactly they're cannon. That's it. They're cannon fodder. That's it. If you're not stabbing with a penis, you better be stabbing with something else. That's, we're at My the same question time. is, she didn't realize the way the game. Why they went all that way? Oh yeah, they walked all the way up the stairs. She kept turning around, talking to him. Yeah, and, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you realize he was burnt and ugly. Like, and then of course, she's the one who actually freaked out, and then he responded. Yeah. So honestly, if she never freaked out and just did her professional job, what if this was a different movie then? What if she never, like, what if she went through exactly. it and had sex with the guy and, and just... And uh, fell in love. Yeah, like a beauty it could the have been a, It could have been a beautiful story. The Cropsey story is a love story. Could have been. It was like my girl with Beauty and the Beast. Kind of Why a, did that? Just took one girl yeah. to destroy everything. And because see, now he killed one person, 
Now he has to kill everybody else. Oh see? God, I killed this hooker, and I have to go kill a bunch of teenagers. To make it worth it. Yeah, yeah. might as well. Might yeah. as well get revenge while you're there. Uh, and there's a little bit of couple stardom. If you if you watch this film, if you're not familiar with this film, but you watch it today, you'll notice George, Jason Alexander, yeah, George, George Costanza, Costanza. and uh, Steve Fisher, Stephen Fisher. Yeah. His name? From uh from the uh, the batteries not included franchise. Yeah, and the guy that played Mark Ratner. I don't know his name. From he was from Fast, Fast Times, Times Ridgemont High. High. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what can we talk about Jason Alexander for a minute? Like, yeah. What the fuck happened to him? Like, because in this movie he's like slender and he's like he's slender. He's, fit, he's, got, he's shit. fit. He got, he got hair. Full head of hair. He had muscles. Yeah, dude. Like he's a sex symbol of the yeah, era. He's like, like, and he's like one of those. Come on, you know, like, hey ladies, he's get like, over hey, here. Yeah, hey. he's like, hey, don't pick on the guy. He's cool, you know. Hey, you know, like he's cool as shit. Like I want to be Jason Alexander in the eighties. Yeah. What happened? What happened in the short? What happened in that ten year span from that when the movie was released to Seinfeld in like ninety three? Yeah, that it just went downhill. You're like, he's fat, bald, thick rimmed glasses. Yeah, yeah. Dorky. And I know it's a character, but he but, looked like that in real life. But like that was what he looked like. Yeah, yeah, he was really fat. You can't tell me you gained that much weight for a rule. Yeah, because he was, he was, he was. My a... girlfriend was just like. Is that who I think? I go, that is George Costanza from Seinfeld. She goes, wow, he's actually really high. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck happened? I don't here? understand. Like, it was that, that little time, like that 10-year span. He went from, from I don't know, like, I don't know, like ice to puddle. I don't know. I wish I would have said something Seinfeld, like, made fun of him. Like, hey, George used to be good looking back in the day. Well, like, I actually, yeah, he had a full head of hair and stuff. It wasn't always on his back. Like, his hair migrated from his head to his back yeah, I'll put it this way when I first saw The Burning a long time ago I knew it was George Costanza but mm. you know you don't really get to talk to people because people won't watch these movies besides you and me but like it's funny because like like I don't know where I was going with that I forget I'm just kind of fucking flatlined there on everybody I'm sorry but it, it, I think what I think I was trying to say is how how do you go from like like he had acting careers in between he yeah. did Pretty Woman you know, he did other movies, so, I mean, and he, you can tell he's gradually gaining weight as he's, like, pretty woman. He started, he was kind of George Costanza already at that point. Right. You Which know what was only, what, four years down the road. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, I don't, I don't know what happened, man. Like, how do you just... Once you hit 30, everything's, everything's downhill. I don't know what to tell you. I just can't believe he went from that, like, even his legs, that whole scene where he gets in the water, like, his legs got, he's got legs like a thoroughbred horse, like, <laughs> they're just so muscular, and he's like, you're like, oh my god, I want legs like that, like. And now he goes to Seinfeld, I was in the pool, yeah. I was in the pool. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of one of those things. Yeah. I don't know. This film, you say it's like, just like every Friday the 13th and stuff like that, but this is like, 1981, Halloween 2 just came out. Yes. Friday the 13th part two. 2 just came out. Because Tom was supposed to work on that, and, and he yeah. quit to work on this this instead. Now, that being said, this is far more brutal than either one of those films. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, but I'm, I'm talking about this, the, 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 the idea of it taking well, place at a camp. Well, this was based off the urban legend of Cropsey. Yeah, so it was Friday the 13th then, technically... A Cropsey legend? Yeah. Would that technically be... Friday the 13th Part 2. Two. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Because one had nothing to do with... Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, though. I was like, do you think that's eventually where they were going with that? They went with the... Because the thing is, Cropsey was supposed to be deformed. If you watch this and watch Friday the 13th Part 2, it's the same thing. Because you have teenagers... You have older teenagers taking care of younger teenagers right. at a camp at a lake. Yeah. And a deformed killer is killing them off one right. by one. Because he was done wrong by teenagers in the past. And here's the funny thing is, unlike Madman, for example, where they, like, usher most of the kids out of the thing, is like, nobody's safe from Cropsey in this. Like, remember that where he just comes out of the canoe and then you have the iconic, like, garden shears and the fucking thing, and he just guard, cuts the his, his hands off, stabs that young girl in the chest a couple times. Like, it's brutal. And then, of course, all the, 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 the raft walk, washes through with all the dead bodies. I mean, there's a lot of visceral moments. I'm so happy that Glazier got the forks right in the, right in the throat and then nailed him to the tree with it. Because he that. was just a piece of I shit. I hated him. I hated Glazier. Why are you going to pick on me, man? You know, he's a creep. He's the fucking faggot. What the fuck? I know kids like that in school. Yeah, I know. Me like, too. And I just, just wanted to kill him then. 
I, I'm glad when Mark Ratner saw that, he's just like, yep. I'm yeah. like, and you knew he's just like, yeah, it's justified. This is I'm not even mad. Like, I'm not even mad. No, this, even is, gonna... this is okay. This is a good thing. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. I think it's really well done. I think there's a lot of great special effects. And another, if you want to say anything about Tom Salvini, like when he puts his ass to the film, it, it, it goes good. Like it, I think some of his good. finest work. New, some, no, I mean, he does a lot of other nudity good was good. Yeah. Good it's nudity. Very, very nice balance of yeah. it, too. Uh, those, holy crap, the shit that women used to wear in the 80s when they played sports. Like, basically nothing. And they were, like, cool with it. And I was like, oh, I wish I... wear, like, a, like, tape over your nipples at Could that you point. just imagine being 18 back then uh, and watching women run around like that back when we were in shape? Because when we were in 18, like, that wasn't happening anymore. People were fucking, what? Pe people started wearing military outfits and calling themselves feminists. I mean, we didn't get a chance to enjoy that. I don't know, man. When I was, like, 18, the girls I had to deal with at 18 were, like, the Kyles of today. Yeah, exactly. Like, they wore, like, they, like, like I used to hang out at skate parks and skate, and that's what they did. They just sat there, smoked cigarettes, and just... And wear their monster t-shirts. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. They weren't sexy at no. all. Not even slightly no. sexy. But those were the girls we weren't with. Because all the sexy girls were on coke and only went after rich kids. Man, you fucking nailed that one mm -hmm. there, man. I know a few of them. Yeah. I just went to jail. Yeah. Good. I Sorry. hope old big Mrs. Bojangles makes you have a good time eating out her fucking cheese tray all night long. Because <laughs> it's going to be good size. <laughs> fucking A, man. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. I wonder how that works in female prisons. Like, Oh, it's going to... It works. It works. Bertha and Bertha and Bertha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sample that cheese tray, bitch. That's the goat cheese of his finest. Mm. Oh. African goat cheese of his finest. Fucking, fucking cream cheese. Supple that honey. Supple it. Mm. Pop that know. boil with your tongue. Ugh. Yeah, uh, get it in there. Don't stop. And yeah, I'm slightly turned on here. It is. It is. It's, like it's one of those things. Girls, you know? like <laughs> that, that horror story when the guy gets locked in the women's prison, they shove a, a pencil down his dick so it stays hard and it's the most painful thing he's ever had, but at the same time, I kind of want it. You know? I shoved a nail down there once. A roofing nail. How'd that go? It bled a lot, but it was still pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah. I you know get, there's people into... Uh, you just gotta toughen it up, you know? Yeah, there's dudes out there I know. Not that I know any, but I've seen dudes into, uh, like, the catheterization and shit. Like, yeah, I'm not into it. Oh, man, I don't know if I'd want that. I'm not really into it. Like, I'm not gonna do it again. Let's just say that. I did it once to see. Just to try it. I'm not doing it again. You did it. I, I'm a one. It's on your bucket list. And the thing is, the thing is, you, you can't be that person that just says no to everything. Oh my god, we're gonna have beer. Yeah, beer. Holy like god. I bought Burk this uh tonight's Maniacs Meat Podcast has been sponsored by the Berwick Brewing Company oh god, Berwick, Pennsylvania. That'd be so great if we had sponsors. That's awesome. Why don't people sponsor us? We're awesome. Yeah. That would be fucking amazing. Yo, if you want sponsors, put down in the comments below. Yeah. We'll take anything. Yeah, it doesn't even... I mean, it could be expired cheese. Yes. But we'll still eat it and be like, tonight's episode... <laughs> <laughs> it gives a character. It does. Oh, the funky pungentness of this. Wow. Know, like, like, fucking get like a sponsor through the pens. And, like, yeah. Well, she's got diapers on her heads and shit. <laughs> oh, I would totally just be nothing but diapers. Like, all we're all naked with diapers. Just wear diapers, that's and it. And go while we do the podcast. That'd be awesome. We'll get like an altar girl to change us. Anyway. <laughs> we got off topic, yeah. The burning. Yeah, and the thing is, we start getting a little crazy, and then someone walks through the room, and then we go, okay, we have to reset now. Okay. The burning, 1981, what do you think? I love it. I love it. I love the movie. I love it, it. Has all kinds of good funness, mm -hmm. and it has good little. And we get to listen to the soundtrack. The soundtrack is good too. Mm -hmm. It's a great score. Somebody we, we talk not enough about in these episodes, and I love scores. Mm -hmm. And the score is one of the major reasons I watch a lot of movies because you have to have atmosphere. You have oh, to have a good yes, score. Absolutely. You can't have. There's some movies out there I've watched that are amazing, terrible score terrible score and you just lose interest like really when the, fast when the first reviewers watched Jaws without the music they hated it with the music they loved it simple as that it's true scores do things they build atmosphere they build they build suspense they do yeah, they really do so the score is a huge thing um, like I said special effects I think this is Tom's one of his finest works you know acting's good it's got a pretty good cast Jason Alexander 
I think I have a man crush. Sorry. Uh, what was her name that I kept on saying? Oh man, I can't. What was her name? I just said it again before we started. That I won't. I don't know what she's been in, but she's got like sixteen Oscars. <laughs> oh, lay it. No. Let me see. And I didn't know she was in this. She was a um, one of the younger girls in this. Fuck, it's not coming up. She was like a nobody cast in this movie. Then. She was. She was a nobody back when this happened. But honestly, she's been in. She's been like films with um, uh, Harrison Ford and shit like that. She's mm. had Oscars. And um, unfortunately, I've said her name. Before we actually started this, and I cannot. Yeah, I can't. Uh, Huntley or something. Laura Knightley. Laura no, Knightley. No, no, no. It was. Uh, it was. Um... Oh, I'm. Sorry. Holly, 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 Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter. Yeah. Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter. Yeah. Because as soon as I got Holly, I was good. Yeah. Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter is in this as one of the younger women, and Holly Hunter has an, an exorbitant fucking film career started by horror films and this this is the one thing that i will say let's point this out quick i think i know Any, where you're going with anyone this. who spits on horror films stop watching all of the cinema because every single major cinema actor from george clooney to val kilmer to holly hunter to jason alexander to helen louise dreyfus all started out in horror oh my god brad pitt it's funny, you know. What I, you know what's cringy for me, and I hate, is when the actor talks about their like their first roles and how bad they were, and they wish they would have never done them. But it's like you know, if you never done that, you would have never you done would not anything. Be where you're at, now. you would have never done anything. George Clooney, you know, I mean, he was in Horror High, yeah, and it, he had a small role in it, and now he's credited on the DVD to sell it, right? But like his first major role in a movie was, if I'm not mistaken, from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. Where he played one of the Gecko Brothers, mm -hmm. and I think that movie was amazing. That's one of be George Clooney's best things. Ever. Absolutely, yeah. and the fact he plays like a, like a, 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 a killer bank robber dude, just bad. He got a neck tattoo going all the way up. Yeah, like it's awesome. And he literally despises that movie. He hates Why? the fact that he did that movie because it's trashy. But you think your fucking role as Batman was any better? You're. He was one of the worst Batman. He was the Val worst Batman. No, no Val Kilmer was. No, Val Kilmer was the worst Batman. But he's the second. <laughs> he is the second worst Batman ever. Like, how could you... In, like, the whole surrounding cast to that film was bad. Yep. Everything in that film was bad. Yeah, yeah dude, you worked with Harvey Keitel, uh, Juliette Lewis, you, uh, Danny Trejo, Cheech Marin. I mean, you had that a, was an all-star crazy ass cast. It was a good cast. That would man. be like Billy Zane saying Demon Knight was shit. Oh my god! Demon Knight is one of the best films that Billy Zane ever did. Oh my god! I love Billy Zane. I love Billy Zane and Demon Knight. I love Billy Zane as the Phantom too. And Dick Miller. Dick Miller. Walter Paisley. Walter Paisley. Unfortunately, he was Uncle Willie or something. Yeah, he was like Uncle Willie in that yeah, movie, but, but he right. plays Walter Paisley. We had to go through and just talk about Dick Miller again and how amazing he was and how many roles he had at, with the subscribed idea of surname of Walter Paisley from Bucket of Blood. And it was like five or six that he played Walter Paisley or Mr. Paisley or Mr. Walter. Any Walters were automatically Walter Paisley. Yeah, yeah this is just oh, what yeah, it is. No, it's just what it is. Yeah, yeah it just, uh, we miss Dick Miller. Uh, was saying that we don't have to worry about him dying. Seth Brown, because last time we talked about Dick Miller, he died the day well, after. Well, here now, Holly Hunter could die. Uh, okay now we, we we might have uh, Jason Alexander get hit by a bus. Uh, I mean, it looks like he already did the ugly bus. Right, yeah, God. short. Fat, I can't fat believe bastard. how ugly he is. You know what I mean? Uh, we have this thing that sometimes when we talk about, you know, who's gonna die? Rick Wakeman. <laughs> Rick Wakeman's gonna die. <laughs> Is he dead already? Or is he alive? Still? I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say I think Rick Wake, I think Rick Wakeman is still alive and now he's gonna die. Because sometimes when we do these podcasts the next like the week later, the person that we just talked about was dead. It's not even it's uncanny. Like we did yeah. remember the Scream Queens? Oh yeah. And the next day who yeah, died? Was yeah, it? Julie Adams. Julie Adams, yeah. And I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. Now we are naming some older older ladies or older people in general you know yeah, I, don't get me wrong but at the same time like, that fucking old yeah but like we, we were naming people that were like in their 50s and they're like oh he's dead now oh fuck like yeah. we killed them too shit 
that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And what is it with these things like we talk about nightmare? The next thing you know, I've seen seventeen nightmare. That's what posts. I'm saying. I told you that the other day. So it's like it's like whatever we talk about, the next like within a day or two it's on some Facebook site that it's like, do we have people watching us? They're like, oh yeah, I remember that movie. Here, it's yeah. supposed to like we we talking about Mystic of the Valley, and, yeah. and then the next thing you know, it has all like seventeen posts about Mystic. I'm like, what the fuck? What the hell happened to that? No one talks about this film. Like, it's kind of interesting. It's literally films that no one ever talks about. It is kind of like, funny because they, they, we are throwing some some really weird ones out. And, oh, the next slasher Sunday, I, I we have been really enjoying the poll interaction on Twitter. I have been for sure. It's, fun. it's, it's fun. been fun. And we did the next poll for the next slasher Sunday. And it came out with Bay of Blood, a.k.a. Twitch of the Death Nerd, Mario Baba. One that has really actually started the real godfather of slasher films. So, I don't know if he's watched it, so it'll be very interesting to see how he takes this giallo slash original slasher. Anyway, what do you think? What's your rating on The Burning, 1981? (sighs) I might give, be able... it, give it the two ratings. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. I think... He thinks. I'm going to go with a... Uh, because of it has a great cast, uh, special effects are done, great score, I'm going to give it a nine. I'm giving it that extra point because of Jason Alexander. I think I have a slight crush on the gentleman. 1980s. Would you suck in the thing back in the 80s? No. Okay. No. Well, it's not, it's not a crush. Doesn't mean I want to cuddle with him shirtless. Oh. You know, so you admire him. I admire him. It's not a crush. <laughs> if I'm crushing on someone, I'll suck their dick. And then for the average moviegoer? Oh, you can't go that low. No, I'm not going low. I'm going eight. That's what I mean. Like, you can't go Yeah, that no, low. if you like Friday the 13th and those other typical, you know, mainstream slasher films, you'll love The Birdie. Yeah. Like, literally, like, like it has, it delivers everything. You, you can't watch Friday the 13th Part 2 and say, oh, The Burning sucks. I'll you know what the you, fucking man. problem is? There are people that would do that. Dumb Why? It's fucking stupid. mainstreamer this movie, this movie, pieces of shit that would do that. This movie is better than Friday the 13th Part 2. It is? This is fucking better than Friday the 13th Part any of them. Any of them. Yeah, except Seven. Seven is good. Seven is, is the yeah, best. Yeah, it is the best. Okay, so rewind. Well, yeah, Kane Hodder just made it that much better. So but the storyline. Yeah, Because yeah. you just completely <laughs> went, you threw the wrench in the works. So everything's possible. <laughs> it ha- I think this has less campfire goodness than uh, than Madman. I think Madman has a little bit more good campfire yeah. goodness. And you finally get to see both of uh, 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 Galen Ross's tits. But... This is absolutely fucking fantastic. What are you rating it, bud? It's a nine. You're going nine. Wait, what did I say? I said nine too. Yeah, straight up nine. For the horror fan, the birding. This is a shitty cover. I hate this cover. The cover is terrible. There's a lot of better covers out the there. The better cover is, of course, Cropsy holding the, the the garden shears above the, the the making out couple. The birding is fucking fantastic. We as soon as I put this poll on because he sent me the um, the list the entry the list the entries to the poll I knew the burning was gonna win. Actually, goddamn close. It didn't though. Doctor hey, said Doctor Giggles was high. Yeah, Doctor Giggles. I'm very surprised. Um, but this one won. This is a fantastic film, and I'll say you went eight, but I'm gonna say for the average film goer, the mainstreamer. Because we know there's a lot of pricks out there, and you should probably kill yourself. I'm gonna say 7.5 okay. out of 10 for the average. That's film fair. Horror. That's fair. Completely fair. Because they, they would they would view this as the textbook slasher, and I always I always find solid beers or textbook beers as a 7.5 out of 10. It's textbook. It's solid. It's something that everybody can get in, enjoy to a certain extent, and walk away. I think a lot of people would view The Burning as a ripoff of, of not Friday the 13th, like you said, mm-hmm. without knowing exactly what's going on, because they're not going to research, because that would take effort, and millennials, especially today, can't do anything unless it's handed to them, and say, here, free money. Fuck you. So. I love it. There we go. I love it, too. 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10, solid for horror films. 7.75 out of 10 for the non-moviegoers. But. Yeah, I think that's fucking awesome. And I'm, I'm glad that we're spinning, and you might not hear it, but we're spinning the fucking soundtrack in the back. 
So it's good. It's good. I'm happy. Are you happy? I am thrilled. You are thrilled. We had a good... This is a good run. It was a good run. We talked about some good movies today. Yeah. And this is our 29th episode. Coming up for the 30th. And check that out because we do a ritual suicide. It's going to be great. Boo me. I'm shirking like I have actually a beard. I'm actually going to start growing mine. You should. I am. You should. I really encourage it. I was talking to a guy at work. Oh, I love God. the picture. I don't want to cut you off of you with the Santa hat. Like, oh yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, with the big massive beard. Belschnickel. Yeah, the Belschnickels. <laughs> yeah, the little fucking Rammspringer. <laughs> um, I talked to a guy at work. And, I know him. And hope, yes, you do. Okay, hey, buddy. Ah. Uh, and uh, hopefully this is true because ever since he's been on third shift, he's never, the years he's been on third shift, he's never got a respirator check. That's why you have to shave. Mm-hmm. To do the respirator check, like fuck it, they're not gonna respirate uh, respirate check me on third. I'm just gonna let this fuck because I want this back out. I want to shave this all off, have this big thing, basically like like Goro with fucking, you know what I mean? I want two more arms. I think I think if you just grow a beard, you stuff it in the respirator. No, yeah, as long and as then you have extra te- tinkering. Technically, they say as long as you pass, it doesn't matter. They don't give a fuck what you have as long. As, and I'll just lie, basically, if I had to. But yeah, just like I just don't, I don't know. I think I want the beard back. I like it. I, I don't know it. if I'm gonna go full beard, like like all this grown out in this. But I'm still. I want this. You should do like a full man. Like yeah, like I a, well, I had that once. Like just like, like I did back in the like 90s. Real long nails. And I, had, shit. I had real. This was all down. Oh, that's but, awesome. You remember Army of Darkness? Yeah. That guy. Oh. Yeah, I had that. That's fucking awesome. Duke of Shale. Why do you why do you rock that again? I did rock it. I'm saying again. Then. Again. Why well, there's a lot of things I can do. Or just like just one soul. Patch. Henry the Red. Duke of Shale and Lord of Duke its people. Duke of Shale. Oh, well hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Looks to me like you're not leaving you're leaving Jack and shit and Jack <laughs> left town. <laughs> yeah. How can you not like Army of Darkness? I do like Army of Darkness. Yeah, but how you, can't you? Oh, you're talking about the... Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. There's people that are losers out there. Wouldn't, wouldn't that make you like a like a commie or something like that? I don't know. It's not American. I know that. Yeah. Uh, they're literally petitioning... Peti- petition, petitioning. Petitioning. To get Bruce Campbell in more movies like and get right pay. Um, there is even right now fan art going around... People think that in the new Spider-Man movie, Jake Gyllenhaal should not have played Mysterio, but Bruce Campbell should have played Mysterio. Mm. And I love Jake Gyllenhaal as an actor. I think he's great, and I think he played an amazing Mysterio. But now that I'm sitting processing everything, I think Bruce Campbell would have made an awesome Mysterio, like an awesome villain. You know, like I think he would have had a great one-liners. Be like, hey, do kid. You know, do you know what I want? Cave Alien 4. Cave Alien 4? Why not Moon Trap 4? To- Thousand. Just move it to four. Not <laughs> have it two or three. Kit. Moon Trap 2000. Yeah. Wait, what is that? Moon Trap 3099? I don't know. Moon Scam. Moon. Mine Trap. Mine Trap. Well, I say Cave Alien because if you watch one of the films that we need to cover later, I think we should do My Name is Bruce and Man with the Two Heads. Man with screaming brain at the same time. Do you agree? You talking about as a podcast? Yeah. Yes. The 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 cave aliens on Bruce. My name is Bruce. All right. Yeah. yeah okay. So we know. totally need a, a cave alien part four. <laughs> I love the fact that Bruce Campbell made a whole film making fun of himself. Yeah, man. Right there you go. Blood. There's not enough Bruce Campbell in the world. No, there isn't. There isn't. Actually, my my mom, it was my mom or my dad. They both have penises. Um, actually, uh, uh, recorded a whole Ripley's Believe or Not episode just because Bruce Campbell was hosting it. And then I'm like, this is ridiculous. I thought the whole thing was stupid, but she goes, oh yeah, but Bruce Campbell. I'm like, yeah, no, that was fine. This the rest of it's just stupid. It's kind of like Briscoe County Jr. It's I like, love Briscoe County Jr. Like it's only good because Bruce Campbell. Yeah, <laughs> but you have fucking Gomez Adams too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't don't Rao say. Raul Julia. And actually, the guy, the black guy that plays his nemesis slash partner, is fucking fantastic. And I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I think he does a really good job too. 
Because the guy is that, yeah. yeah, he's trying to kill him half the time and help him half the time. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Briscoe Chowdy Jr., I think, I think Briscoe, now correct me on my dates. Briscoe County Jr. with his craziness actually set up Hercules and Xena <laughs> to, to, to really be a thing. Yeah. Because the craziness of Briscoe County Jr. literally got superimposed onto. Did you? Rob Tapper was with it. Yeah. You know I mean? Did you? I mean, I watched like I grew up like watching Briscoe County. I grew up watching. Hercules. I have the whole collection. I grew up watching Hercules and Xena, and you know, he was always a face you saw. I always recognized him in all of them. Mm-hmm. And only ever became a huge fan of him after Evil Dead. Like, was that you, or did you know right from the bat? Like, were you a fan of Bruce Campbell? Like, did you? I don't know. I didn't watch. I, no, Evil Dead I, didn't come into my life until later on. My mom rented, um, made sure that we rented all the Evil Deads when we were kids. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's different. I there was a, a video store called Powerhouse Video that used to sell uh, rent Nintendo games and had an amazing VHS collection of horror films. And that's where we got, she got us, when we were 9 and 10, by that area, she got us all the faces of death. All this. They, they, we were, like, here, sit down and watch this. Like, that, my mom was bringing her here. Watch all these faces of death films. You know, watch you'll this like story. this. Yeah, watch all this death and destruction. And we saw Evil Dead, you know what I mean? Like, so we rented it. And we're like, whoa, this is fucking crazy, you know what I mean? And then Evil Dead 2, obviously. Then Army of Darkness, you know. So we we watched them technically chronologically. I've watched them all backwards. See what we watched them forwards, including Hercules and Xena and stuff like that. Because so, like I said, I grew up on Xena, I grew up on Hercules, I grew up on, on Briscoe, and then I remember staying home from school. I caught Evil Dead or Army of Darkness, mm-hmm. and then I, later on I caught Evil Dead, and then I finally fought, watched, or I watched Evil Dead Two, Dead by Dawn, and then Evil Dead, and it was just funny because like I watched them backwards. Like when my friend told me about Evil Dead, he's like, "Oh, watch!" He's like, "Watch Evil Dead with me." And I'm sitting there watching. Go, oh, that's the guy from Army of Darkness. He goes, "That's the same movie. This, the, this is the middle one." I'm like, "Oh," I feel like an idiot. Mm. But I really wasn't a Bruce Campbell fan until after I saw Evil Dead, and now I appreciate his workings in films such as not films, TV shows as Briscoe. Like I said, Briscoe County for me, he makes the fucking show. Mm. And same with Herx. Herx was good though. I think Kevin Sorbo. You no, know, the thing is, like with Hercules, Kevin Sorbo and his uh, his partner really had to carry the show because, like Bruce Campbell and stuff, were only in there for like very. Yeah, very they've long. always played like little side characters and shit. So. Did you ever notice that, like, for like three or four months in the show series, like he was heavy for some reason? Like, why is Bruce Campbell so heavy? And like, there's like a continuation. Like, we could get Bruce these months. Let's make as many episodes with him in it. And then he disappears again. Yeah, what was he doing between then? I don't know. And then he come back. Maybe he's doing, like, Cave Alien Part 2. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But, like, you know, I knew a man with a screaming brain, which is, like, I actually... Until later, yeah. That is one that we're going to do on a, a regular episode. But, technically speaking, could be a Trashy Tuesday. <laughs> could be. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty bad. I guess. I suppose... I just like Bruce Campbell. Who doesn't? Do you have his books? I have no books. I have uh, his books. If chins, if chins could talk. Yeah. yeah. Well, you played his. his uh, you also, I played uh, with Hail to the King. Uh, uh, oh, f- fistful the of video game. The video games. The video games. I, I, I still see in Facebook groups where he's like, they always bitch about the Evil Dead video games and how they're garbage, and. The one that gets the most notoriety for being the worst is the very first game, Hail the King. And to me, that is the most awesome game. It's hard to play. It's not for your average, just, I just want to play a game. It's a, it, you got, it's a thinker. You need to know strategy. You need to know gaming to play that game. Because you can die fast yes, you a can. lot. Yeah. And you will not get outside of the cabin. No. You'll be stuck in that cabin trying to figure shit out. And you just need to know your, your 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 strategies, man. You need to know where to go at what time with what weapons, you know. And once I learned, because when I bought Hell of the King, I loved it, and it was I just because it was Evil yeah, Dead. Because it was Evil Dead, yeah. yeah. But I could never get out of the cabin, so it kind of got boring for me. But once I learned to do things and build, you know, my soul, and 
once you got out of the cabin, you could uh, you could explore, and which was great because once you watched all the movies, you got to explore the land that the movies never talked about. You know, like the the Indian camp, the Boy Scout camp, where all the kids are dead. You know, and you go down there, and they all have bow and arrows, and they're shooting at you, giggling and shit, like, and they're like they're disappearing, and they'll reappear over here because they're ghosts. You know, the flying eyeballs, the crazy redneck family that lives up on the hill. You know, like. Uh, yeah. Did you ever find that path that leads out? Like, there's that path. They said, "Oh, there's that path." And I never beat the game. Um, I remember the one. I think my last villain I played was the old lady. She was up in the attic and stuff. She's like, "Oh, she's like, who leaves an old lady up here?" And it's like, "My boys went out for a little bit to go hunt." He goes, "I'm okay." And as soon as you turn around, like the bed of the legs, the legs of the bed, like come out, and like you find out she's like, just a giant spider woman. You know, the bed's like her butt, and like she's just like, eh, hey, she tries killing Ash, and like, you have to fight her and stuff. Like, it's awesome. I just realized, though, too, we just wheezed the Bruce again. We wheezed the Bruce. Yeah, we just, that could have been a whole wheezed the Bruce episode that we just did. And we I just, hope he don't die now. We just threw it, uh, and we just threw it right on the burning. I'll feel bad if he dies. Yeah. yeah. We have a tendency of killing people on the show for some reason. Yeah, I, I don't have a tendency to fuck them, so I think it's a waste. Now, I would say my favorite part of the burning before we get go yes. has to be the canoe scene. The what one? The canoe scene. The canoe scene. Where, like, they go to that empty canoe and he comes up. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's so brutal. You know what I mean? Like, they, they're, they're, they're stabbing that young girl and she's coughing up blood. Like, this isn't your standard, like, teenagers, like, sex age teenager drama bullshit. This is, like, He's killing everybody. Yeah. Right. I like the Glacier kill. Well, of course, you know, and the thing is where the guy gets stuffed to the tree, to the side of the post. Oh, yeah. And the whole fucking thing's on fire. Mm -hmm. And he, like, I mean, it, it is, there's a lot of shit to this film. It's a lot going on. It's got a lot to it. And the, the thing is that scenes. I think the human drama of, of Cropsey as well takes it over anything uh, Friday the 13th can do, too. Because with Friday the 13th, you know how it's going to end because you know you can't beat Jason. This gives you that. It's done. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's done. It's over. It's like. Oh, and, you, no... and I like the fact how they made sure there was no, there was no sequel gonna happen because they kill him dead. I know the Weinstein's are in a lot of water right now with with some of them being sex offenders and whatnot and uh, sexually assaulting people, but this was their first movie. All the Weinstein walked together on this. The Harveys and the Bobs and the Burgers and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I remember that Trump uh, meme where it says, hey, remember that when you finally realize that half the people that have been bitching about you are pedophiles. Hey, go fuck yourself. Woo. Eh? Eh? I, I think it's a perfect time for a fucking public execution. Just saying. Uh, Weinstein, hello? Hello? Time to go? <laughs> oh, man, that's fucked. Yeah. That is fucked. That's, that's true, funny, though. It's funny. It is funny. It's what we call tongue and cheek. Tongue and cheek. Tiki, cheeky tongues. Tongue My cheeky cheek. tongue wags voluble. Cheeky tongue. That's a, that's a Jewish racial slur, I think. Sheeny is a racial slur. Sheeny? Sheeny. The Sheeny curse. Never heard of it. Never heard of it either. The Sheeny. The Sheeny. Did you just make it up? No, no. I remember hearing about clerks too. And oh, the Sheeny. Yeah, he's like, oh, my grandmother used to call the Jewish kids the Sheeny. <laughs> I always said it'd be nice to Jewish kids because like you put the sheeny curse and he goes, Jesus Christ, Randall. He goes, what? He goes, sheeny's his racial slur. <laughs> I never heard of it till then, but I've never heard of it. I know chutzpah. chutzpah. You got that chutzpah, kid. Oh, that's good. He was looking at you, kid. See, that's the problem. Is Justin's not here? He could tell us all the the Hasidic slurs that he. Thanks made. a lot, Justin. Way to go, Justin. Bailed You've been on us slacking again. lately, bud. Slacking, slacking. We're gonna have a little powwow tomorrow at work. Yep, have the slack powwow. You gotta pump it up. Pump up the jam. Pump, pump it, it up. up. And get this party started. Well, I guess I this is it. I guess we're just talking now. 40 minutes. We didn't have that much to say about the other movies. We just went yeah, on. Yeah, we love the burning. We love the juice, Bruce. Juicy Bruce. <laughs> Enough with the juice. Wheeze the juice. Wheeze, Wheeze the, the juice. Wheeze kill the juice. juice. Kill the juice. <laughs> <'Cause> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Wheeze the Bruce. Yeah, we did get like a 20 minute Bruce, Bruce, <laughs> yeah. Bruce thing, didn't we? God, I hope he watches our podcast. That'd be so good. 
Well, that's all I gotta say. It's a good, good fucking movie. Watch it's on YouTube. All right. Well, this has been Paul. This has been Josh. Maniacs Meet Podcast, episode 29, Slasher Sunday. <sighs> Two weeks from now, look forward to Bay of Blood. And this coming Friday, look for the episode 30, I Drink Your Blood and I Eat Your Skin. Cheers. Watch that finger. <laughs> <laughs>